When you first launch Avid Media Composer 6, you will see this window where it says Select Project. You will see User Profile, and by default, the username on the computer will be given. If you do not wish that to be the case, select here and select on Create User Profile to create your own profile. If you already have a profile from another computer, select on Import User or User Profile. To the bottom left, it says select the project. There's nothing here because the first time the program is being launched on this computer. And to the right, you'll see it says private, shared, and external. Private means that only this user will be able to open this project. Share means that all users, if there are more than one account on this computer, can open this project. And external, of course, is if you're on an external system or drive and you have a user profile on a storage unit. I'll select on new project. You will see the presets for projects. Project name was in the upper left corner. I'll go ahead and give this a new name. I'll put practice. And I'll put the number one. Format. Select on the format that comes closest to what you have. In my case, it will be 1080p 2997. The rest of dimension is correct. Aspect ratio is correct. And I'll take a look at here where it says dimension supports the rest of type standard AVC, XDCAM, HD50, and XDCAM EX. I'll select on OK. Now I will see my project name and I'll select on OK and Media Composer will launch. When you first open up Media Composer, this is what you'll have by default. You'll have a bin automatically open for you. I will move that to the left hand side so it could be out of the way. And you can open up your windows as large as you wish. In Media Composer, on the upper left-hand corner, you'll see your project window. It'll say the name of the project. In this case, it's Practice 1. It'll say Bins underneath that. Settings. This tab here will be for your effects. Format for your project. Usage and Info. Bins, of course, are the bins in which you're going to import your sequences, clips, audio clips, and any other items that you wish to have in your project. You can create bins inside of bins. So for example, if I wish to have a bin name, I'll go ahead and put a name bin, and I'll name this one sequences. And that's where I will have my sequences. You can take these windows and have one after another, or in Media Composer's case, you can select on the tab here on sequences and put it in another bin. And now there will be two tabs in the same window. Keep in mind they are in different bins. They are not in the same bin. They're just utilizing the same window. Having said that, I'll go back to my practice one bin. And here I'll go back to settings on the upper left corner. Now here, now let me move this out of the way so you can see some of the more options here. It's where you have your settings for your Media Composer. Now I wish to change the way Media Composer looks here. So I'll go ahead and select on the settings window. I'll scroll down and I'll go to the interface. So you'll see here says interface. I'll double click on that and you'll see that some of the options for the interface come active here. 
this here's the user interface brightness I'll make it darker and you'll see here is a selected text will be blue unselected will be white if I wish to make it yellow or orange or purple then you'll see those will be the changes that will be made show tool tips allow custom bin backgrounds default timeline time code tracks and so on and so forth are all available here and you can deselect and select whatever you wish to have I'll get select and apply and you'll see that my changes have been applied to my interface I'll select an OK once I have done that I can go ahead and select on my bin practice bin is the name of it and because it's selected the text turns purple or magenta and I'll go ahead and import some footage now there are two options here you can select to do an import directly into it, Media Composer and Media Composer will take that footage and transcode it to MXF files now that means is it will transcode or it will change whatever media you have to what Media Composer needs to use natively for itself if you wish to use the footage natively without conversion in other words if you have a QuickTime file that's Apple ProRes and you wish to keep it Apple ProRes while you're working right away because you want to have direct access to that media you can do what's called AMA Avid Media Access so I can go to the file menu I'll go to import first and I'll select on a folder here let's see CS intro clips and we'll select on Philadelphia one and I'm going to go ahead and select on open now this is direct import by the way on this window now that I'm on it I can select on the options here and you'll see it says image size adjustment image size for current format crop pad for DV do not resize smaller images resize image to fit format raster file pixel to video mapping computer RGB computer RGB dither image or 601 SD or 709 HD 16 to 235. I can also select on auto detect sequentially number files. And on the right hand side, this is very important alpha channel invert or import white equals opaque. Do not invert black equals opaque or ignore. So sometimes when you bring in footage with an alpha channel, and it does not translate in Media Composer, these are the things you may want to look at before bringing that clip in. I'll select on OK and I'll go ahead and drag, oh, never mind, I'll just select it and select on Open. And it will transcode that clip. Now I want to show you this because I want to show you the difference between the time that I have to wait for this to transcode and appear in my bin versus doing through AMA and of course you can make your decision of which one you rather have and I'll explain the difference and it'll be just a moment just a couple of more seconds And there we are. Now here in my bin, I have my clip. It's in list view. If I want to see a thumbnail view, I can select down the bottom uh, left hand side of my bin. I can select on there and you'll see it says text, frame and script. So I select on frame, you will see here a thumbnail of my shot. If I wish to make it lar larger, I can select on the command key and the letter L and that will make my clip or thumbnail 
larger. Command K will make it smaller. If I select on this button again and select on script, you will see that it will have columns available inside this bin and you will have the thumbnail as well. If you select on the list view or text view, you also get columns available to you. To see it in my source monitor, which is the one on the left hand side, I will double click on my clip and I will see that it's open here. I will select on the play button and it will play. You can select the space bar to play as well. You can select the J key to go backwards or reverse. Select the letter K to stop and select the letter L to go forward. You can select the letter J many times and it will go faster and faster. You can select the letter L too many times and it will go faster and faster. J will go backwards, L will go forward. If you click and hold both the J and K key at the same time, it will go backwards in slow motion. And if you press the L key and the K key and hold them down at the same time, it will go forward in slow motion. I'll put this car here just in case you don't see that. You can also use the left and right arrows on your keyboard to go frame by frame. To select a portion to start your footage, let's say I want to start before the vehicle comes in, I will select the letter I and you will see this mark here meaning that it's the end point and if I want to scrub here and went to the second car passes and select the letter O to stop that's the portion of footage that will come in if I wish to see that what I select it I'll select the option key in the number six and that will loop around the footage that I selected. Once I have that, I'll go ahead and edit that into my sequence. Now I don't, do not have a sequence at this time, so I can go to my bins, select on my sequences bin, or remember we have a tab here that's a sequences bin, and I can right click in here and put new sequence and you'll see it says untitled sequence that will be listed here and it will be listed here in the timeline it says timeline untitled sequence so I will name this sequence I'll name it practice one and now you'll see here in the center it says timeline practice one so I have a sequence I'll double click it just to make sure it's active have my shot and I will bring this shot into my sequence. Now to insert or overwrite this clip I can simply select it and drag it in to my timeline and just drop it in and you'll see that the clip now is available in my timeline and I'll scrub through it. I will go ahead and undo that by pressing the command Z key on a PC as control Z as in Zebra I can also use the B and the V keys to insert or overwrite. So if I select the letter B, you'll see that it comes down to the timeline. So that's how I perform my first edit in Avid Media Composer. Now to move my playhead around, I'm simply selecting on the playhead and dragging around.
going back to what I was saying before, you saw how uh, what amount of time it took to convert the shot into my timeline or I should say into my project. I'm going to bring in another shot by selecting the file menu and go to link to AMA file. The last folder I had open will remain available to me and this time I'll select Philadelphia 2 and I'll select on open and you'll see now it is available to me. Now there is a difference here of an AMA file and a file that has been converted or transcoded. I can't barely see this so I'm going to go ahead and make this larger. To make text larger in your bin, select the bin itself to the edit menu, select on set font and here I will select the font so I'm going to change this to Helvetica just for the heck of it and I'm going to change the size of it so I'll make it 14 and I'll press on OK and you'll see that the text size has changed if I don't like the font, again, I'll go to the Edit menu, Set Font, and I'll select on Arial. And you'll see that that has changed. So now I can read a little bit better. It says Philadelphia 2, and you'll see here the symbol here. If I were to double click on that, you will see that my clip is readily available right away. So the difference here is that although I didn't take the time to transcode it, once I put it into the timeline and I'm ready to either export this item or apply certain filters, it will, be ha it will have to be transcoded at that time. So it's up to you of when do you want to go ahead and take the time for transcoding. Do you wish to bring in your footage and go ahead and work with it right away? Or do you want to go ahead and take the time to transcode it and then when you're going to export, you're going to be able to export right away. So again, it's up to you when you wish to take the time for transcoding. Another difference is that you can select the portion of a clip and only that portion that you use will be transcoded versus before when I brought in the first clip that first clip came in in its entirety and it transcoded the entire clip if I were to select just this portion of this clip only that portion will be transcoded if that's the only part that I bring into my timeline so that's another difference because it will go ahead and save you a great amount of space when it comes to this transcoding. So that's something to think about, especially if you're doing mobile like I am on a laptop. Space is very, very uh, tight when it comes to mobile devices. So if you're on a laptop, you may want to consider uh, using AMA so that other way only the footage you use will be transcoded. So once I have this again I can select the letter B and you'll see that that has come in into my timeline. It also has a yellow line on it and that is because it's telling me hey this is AMA not a transcoded clip. But you'll see that it's available to me and it should play in real time which it does. And that's how you edit in Avid Media Composer, or at least that's how you start in Avid Media Composer. Thanks for watching. This is Luis Sierra for Chesapeake Systems.